It's time again for the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge, brought to you by American Car Care Centers in conjunction with C8 and in the International Candlepin Bowling Association. Hi again, everybody, and welcome inside the Woburn Bowlerdrome. John Holt with Dan Murphy. Welcome back to the show as we welcome back Craig Holbrook, who right now is on a roll. He certainly is. He accomplishes, well, two things anyways, and he's on, on track for a third, and that's one. He has jumped into the top spot in the top three. He accomplished a triple strike, and he'll get that thousand dollars unless somebody else hits it. And he's zeroing in on a personal best of he's won four in a row. He's done it six in a row a couple years back. Looking for number five today. You mentioned the top two game totals. We track this as we look forward to the end of the season. Right now, Craig is on top uh, in the top three. He'll see if he can better it today. We say hello again to Trina Fernandez standing by right now with the challengers. Trina. Thank you very much, John. Today our challengers are Brian Fuller Jr. and Peter Iannuzzo. And Peter, you're going to have your work cut out for you today because Brian shot six strikes in a row at a 224. Is that right, Brian, a couple That's years right. ago? Yeah. And where was that? Lafayette Lane, in Amesbury. And Lafayette's known as a tough house. How did it feel to get that? It was incredible. I was just on a roll and it was great. Yeah, well, I think most people are still shocked by that achievement, even in your own family, right? Yeah, my grandmother was pretty happy. Yeah, <laughs> you made it in the paper and everything. That's pretty exciting. So you're going to try to get Pete over here today. And you know, this is Pete's third time on our show this season. You're our champ coming in. We've got to get you to hold on to that championship spot a little bit longer, though. Yeah, I got to hang tough up there. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we do today. I got to get there first. So good luck to myself and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. I like that. Good luck to myself and Brian. You're going to be a nice guy. Throw that in there. Yeah. Well, I wish you both good luck, too. Back over to you guys. Trina, good to have you back. Craig, you look for number five in a row, but two real tough challengers today. Um, yeah, you know, I might have to check my age at the door because I know their fathers. <laughs> and now I know the sons, too, so I guess I've been around a while. Your uh, top total right now is at 295. Can you better that? I'm hoping to. You know, it's still a lot of season left. You know, it kind of worries me a little, maybe. But I like where it is right now, though. It's fine. Well, good luck today. Thank you. We're back with a challengers match right after this on C8. <laughs> Welcome back to Woburn, all set for the Challengers match. Glad you're with us on C8 for the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge. Pete Iannuzzo on the left, Brian Fuller Jr. on the right. He will go first. The winner to meet Craig Holbrook. It's a one game Challengers match as usual. Brian from East New Hampshire. And he starts. Oh, by nearly. Dropping all 10, got that last pin to slide over and leaves one up. The six pin kind of walked across the lane a few inches. It didn't fall, but he'll start with a spare. Starts with a spare, and as uh, Trina alluded to in the opening of the program, he once bowled a 224, which included six strikes to begin his game. Incredible. Now, you always hear about lane conditions and fast houses versus uh, not so fast. Lafayette Lanes in Amesbury is a true scoring <laughs> house, so it makes that 224 even more impressive in my life. This as far a, as I'm concerned. Just a tremendous total yes. that day. It's a fill of eight for him after the spare in the first. He's looking at the 3-6, trying to go two marks in a row, and he will do that. And a lot of pressure put on Pete Iannuzzo right off the bat. Pete's been a regular this season, back a yes. number of times in the show. It's his third time this season. Remember, all the bowlers, they have to sit out one taping session. With the exception of that last taping, full taping session of the season, the defending champ, of course, comes back, but all those bowlers would be eligible again in September. He's on the head pin to drop nine himself. Oh, that, will that go? He gets a rocking nine pin. Put a face shot here, Pete. Got the wood too as a little guide over the left. Good point, John. If you're going to miss, miss to the left. You still got a chance. Gives you a little more room. That's what he's going to do. Matches the spare of Brian Fuller. We've got a good one early. He's got his game face on. I always like Pete. He's he's such a nice guy to talk to. But when he's on the lanes, you can tell by his face. He's got his game face on. He's all business. Here's his fill in the second. A little hop, skip, and a jump, but he got away with it. Drops up six, leaves the two, four, five, and seven with a piece of wood in between the two and the five. Should help him. Another piece of wood looking at him, though. 
You'll make it two in a row. And we're off and running, John. <laughs> Marks all around. Two starred from both guys. Our pin cam in action today, and there's a look at that spare from Ianuzo. Back to Brian, his fill in the third. Off to the left, still gets eight to go. Leaves the one and the three on lane 35. Three, three in, a in a row! My, oh my! It's not a matter of who's going to get the first mark, it's who's going to have the first open frame. <laughs> 46 plus this ball will be a score through three. Well, he's going to have to work with this one. Two, four, and six. Ideally, you want to try to split the two and the four and have the two jump into the six. Oh, too heavy on the two. So it took five boxes between the two bowlers, but finally our first open frame coming in the uh, sixth overall box. He's at 61 is Brian Fuller through four and now back to Pete. Comes from the uh, bowling Ionuzo family. His brother's been on the show. His dad's a regular here at the tapings. Yeah, Hall of Famer Pete Sr. Better leave for Pete here. Not much easier though, you gotta be flush in the head pin. You always run the risk of chopping out the one in the eight or one in the nine and leaving the other pin in the back. Comes off the wall! Oh, what a spare! Oh. He matches with three marks in a row. Off the left wall, off the right wall, and finally the eight and nine go down. Take a look at the pin cam, CN8, setting the standard with our pin cam. One of the first bowling shows ever to employ the pin cam, and what a Tremendous shot that is. Back on the head pin, but right straight through the middle, the one, five, and eight. Looking at that spread eagle plus the nine. And again, hit the object pin. He was trying to split the two and the four, but he took out just the two pin. He'd be happy for an eight or a nine here, I'm sure. Just a disappointing five. Ten bit advantage for Brian Fuller at 61 to 51. Craig Holbrook again with his dad Al to support him here today. Waiting to be a winner of this match, awaiting the winner. Dad sitting in the same seat he has sat in the last <laughs> four weeks. Um, didn't check his clothing. I don't know if he's wearing the same clothes or not. <laughs> Got to stay in a routine. Oh, right around the triangle, two, four, and five. Gets the two and the five, and the two goes right around the four. Brian's left just two pins up through five when he left two up back in the fourth. He's at 71. Now lead 36, the sixth box. Seven go. Four seven with the six pin. The only thing I see there is try to hit the wood. Hopefully it'll come off the wall. No, couldn't get anything to come back for the six. So after three marks in a row, it is three open frames in a row for Brian Fuller. His score gets to 81. A pair of 10 boxes in five and six. And Brian doesn't seem like he has a nervous bone in his body. He seems to be very relaxed up there, too. You look at Pete's high single, 178. Well, maybe he wanted that head pin to stay up. Yeah, he was looking at the 189, now, uh, 1910. Now he's got just a 910. Piece of wood to the left, you probably try to use that. Maybe the right hand tip, have it come off the left side wall. Oh, how about on the red both. line? And he was surprised himself with that shot. He's, I thought he had to be farther right or left, but right on the red line, the ball goes down and gets the nine and tips it into the 10. What a shot. Here's his fill in the sixth. Chance to uh, tighten this up considerably with Brian Fuller. Missing the head pin, but drop six, leaves the four horsemen. Come on. Keep it 
looking at one, two, four, and seven. Outside, uh, takes the one and the seven. Pretty hard to do. And leaves the two and the four. Very close match, though. We've got a six pin difference at the moment. Brian up by a half dozen at 81 to 75. Takes out eight, leaves the six and the ten. Two choices. I think you'll probably shoot right at the pins. You can see them. And that's what he's going to do. His fourth mark. Probably another 20 years, and he'll decide, maybe I should play the wood. As you get older, those you take advantage of those little things in the game. <laughs> right back in the pocket with 6'10 again. No, the six goes. Lonely 10 pin, probably the hardest single pin for a right-hander to convert for a spare or a 10 box. And that's a nine. Clip the wood in the channel. He's at 109 through eight, four marks. Pete also has four marks, but Pete has had trouble with the fills. A it, it, it three fill and a six. You're right. It couldn't come down to those two frames, uh, John. Spare three and then disappointing five frame. But Brian did his job. He got one mark. That forces Pete to get at least two marks to catch up. And he's got a shot at one of them, the seven pin. Again, left-hander, probably most difficult pin for a right left-hander as, as the ten pin is for a right-hander. Nothing well, there you go. That. Matching spares. Seven boxes for Pete, five marks. One, two, three, five, and seven. Now he's on to the eighth, and here's a huge fill. Well, you heard the crowd, not bad, and he means because he has the two and the ten with the wood next to the two, another piece in between has got a shot at converting this for his second mark in a row and really tighten the matchup. Ooh. Misses Quiet. them both. Tactical error there. Sure, Pete would like to have that one back. That's what he wanted, and I think with a second piece of wood in there, he would have converted that. Lead down to seven, 109-102. Both bowlers with two boxes remaining. And Brian's thinking about doing the same thing. It put at least one mark up. And he's gonna have a shot at the kingpin, the five. No strikes in this match, all spares in terms of the marks. And there's another one. Of course, to throw another mark, a decent fill and another mark would really put a pressure on Pete. Probably have to uh, throw a double strike to, to come out on top. Fill of nine. And the wood right in front of that 10 pin. Well, remember, he just missed this pin, but he didn't have the wood to benefit him the last time. And the wood Doesn't is rolling out. He's close to the channel this time. Yeah. And it, you know, that, as that wood rolled out, it turned a little bit. Didn't give him the good angle on the 10 pin. So chance for Pete, but he's going to need two huge marks. 138 is the score from Brian. Had that missed opportunity, though, there in the final box. We'll see if Pete can take advantage. He needs 36 pins to tie, 37 to win. So those are two huge marks. Oh, boy. That looked good. Got the four to go, but not the two. Now, he's a piece of wood just behind the two pin. He hits that two pin. That pin's going to go toward the six and ten. Whether he can knock those two pins down remains to be seen, but the wood is uh, at a pretty good angle right behind it. No, he missed the two pin altogether. So now he's going to have to throw a double strike. You better get a few of these, or he may need the triple. 
up to 111. It's a double strike, seven to tie, double strike, eight to win. He's going to do that. He might as well throw the triple. <laughs> Get part of that <laughs> triple so easy, strike huh? pool along with Craig Holbrook. Easier said than done. Needs a strike right here to remain alive. Oh, no! That close. Just Boy. the seven. Wasn't from lack of effort. Leaves just the seven pin. So Brian Fuller will try the end of streak of Craig Holbrook at four. Pete gets one more bonus ball with the spare in the 10th. Pete's going to be on the losing end of a very decent opening game. Six marks, more marks than Brian posted up. It really comes back to those two frames we we're talking about. The spare three hit the head pin, chopped out the middle, and then uh, had a real bad frame, the five box. And that could be the difference. Get seven more, and it's a 10 pin victory for Brian Fuller Jr. 138 to 128. Good match, but only one bowler advances. That's Brian, who takes on Craig Holbrook next, right here on CNA. Back for the championship match on C8 and the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge, and the champ will go first, as is customary. That is Craig Holbrook looking for win number five in a row. He'll take on Brian Fuller. He just saw defeat Pete Iannuzzo, 138-128. Craig from East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, and we are all set. Drops five, leaves the uh, seven eight and the one three six. If you're a historian and want to know some of the other bowlers that have uh, won consecutive matches, we go way back to Dave uh, Dupree had won five in a row, and um, of course we have Kevin Davis who had won six, Joe Cassio won seven almost caught our leader, which is Det Klein, with eight. An interesting fact also, wow, oh, big strike. You see our pin cam. That was a quick strike. Another, oh, he matches it. Wow. <laughs> can't get a word in edgewise here with these bowlers. An interesting uh, stat with um, Kevin. Kevin Davis is that. You see the replay of that strike. <laughs> Meanwhile, he Ball throws another, another one. As we come back oh live, it is another strike for Brian Fuller. Didn't have a single one in that challengers match, but opens with two in a row. Well, alluded to Trina in the beginning of the show, he's had a 224 with six consecutive marks, so he can throw, uh, strikes, I should say, so he can throw them. I'll get back to my thought in just a second because we'll probably have another one here. <laughs> and of course, Brian, when he steps up again, will be looking for the triple and yeah. kind of take away some of Craig Holbrook's money. That's right. First part of the fill, got Craig eight. He makes it ten. Spare nope. on strike. No panic there. Just uh, go along. What, try to weather the storm. Spare on strike. Kevin Davis' streak was stopped at six by Mike Morgan, who will be on next week against... Um, Sean Baker, um, household name of Candlepin Bowling, Mike, Mike Morgan. And there's a strike on spare. And well, this the, is all the makings of a shootout. When, this, when the storm subsides here, folks, I'll give you some more stats. But right now, we got some matches here. Look at this. Get over five pin. Triple strike attempt. Oh, my. A little light in the head pin, but Greg says thank you. And a thousand bucks, <laughs> all his still for the moment. Good try. So Brian finally leaves a, a pin. 53 through three for Fuller. Opposite a strike here in the fourth from Craig. Get six to go. You get the two, four, five, seven. 
at that kingpin. It leaves the three others. Sixty-three. The six pin edge, however, Craig will add to that total in the fourth right here off the strike. That's an opening uh, double strike and a good opening first four frames, but not to be outdone as our champ. Chance for his fourth consecutive mark, the one and the two facing Craig Holbrook. Got him. He's up to 77, four marks in a row. Strike, spare, strike, spare. There's a pattern there. If it stays to form, we're looking at another strike on lane 36. Well, he kicked out the four pin and then the 10. What a comeback! Almost for the strike. It's like he's picking up where he left off last week. Oh, my. Craig. Didn't expect that. John, me, and the rest of the crowd thought he converted that one. Wow. I'd like to see that on the pin cam. What happened to that wood? There's our Cracker Jack crew right on top of things. What happened to that double piece? <laughs> Came in contact with each other. One went right, one went left, and the six pin stood up. Brian now in the fifth. Oh, oh right back to the strike. Wow. <laughs> Take a look. Gonna wear out this pin cam this week. Some terrific shots. Back live, drop six, four horsemen left. Game one of two between these two. Climbs back to within six pins of our champ. Make it a seven pin, seven pin advantage for Craig Holbrook at 96 to 89. It's a good one so far. Back with more bowling from Woburn right after this on CNN. Okay, folks, our next tape date. Join us next uh, April, April 9th, 9 o'clock. Come down, see some of the great bowling in action. You can watch it on TV. It's, it's exciting. But to be here and see all the goings-on with the cameras and stuff, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And, of course, we're going towards the end of the season with the top three bowlers. June 4th is when we'll tape that final show, the top three scores. And let me give you a hint. You want to get here early because we expect a big crowd. And what we're going to do is we're going to put seats down the lanes on either side of the bowling pair that we use. So it should be exciting. And uh, you got to get here early to get those choice seats, folks. We look forward to seeing you in April and, of course, uh, in May and then down the line in June for the championship, our fifth year of the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge. We've brought you over 175 shows. We have been here for you over the last five years, and thanks for your loyalty. All, All right. set now. Craig Holbrook to uh, resume game one, and just a terrific one so far. He has a seven-pin advantage as the champ over Brian. He's got a seven pin drop here one seven eight he's going after the head pin hopefully the ball or the head pin will go down and clear out the seven and the eight oh well, we got the one and the eight left the seven so for the first time he'll be open two frames in a row the sixth and now the seventh still at 105 already though at the opening of the show, if you were with us, John asked him if he thought he was uh, pleased with the 295 top score. He, he'd like to beat it. Doesn't feel real safe with it yet. <laughs> Drops nine, leaves the two. He's got to avoid that piece of wood out front. He does just that. What a shot. He's pretty sharp today, John. Just that like out loves it, too. Weeks. Yes. Go for Brian. 
This is his seventh box. Game one. Mark. Spy using the wood. Beginning of the show also, Craig uh, talked about two bowlers knowing their parents. Well, I wasn't going to say it, but I bowled against Brian's dad. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy, too, and a pretty good can up in bowl in his own right. Eight on the fill. Piece of wood there. It would be tough, I think, if he hits the red line. Upper. Just wasn't enough of it covering the five pin to carry the nine. And guess what? Brian Fuller has grabbed the lead at least temporarily by two pins. Craig has the uh, fill coming up in the ninth after that spare back in the eighth, but evenly matched so far. Four marks, including a double strike for Brian. Five marks, including a streak of spare, strike, strike, spare, strike, spare for uh, Craig. Nearly strike on spare right there. Instead, it's a nine on the fill and a chance for back-to-back -back marks with another spare. Lefty goes after that seven pin. Ooh, a little hop skip by Craig. He knew that was not on target, but he thought he might get away with it, but left the seven pin. Not this time. 10 box to 134 through nine complete for Craig. You know, as a bowler, I never did this, but being an announcer, I can do this hindsight. He's at 134 now, John. Remember the double piece of wood in front of the single pin on the fifth, and he just missed another single there. This could be a huge game. It's going to be a decent one in the 140s anyways. And if he converts this, possibly 150. And this is a makeable shot with the wood behind the two pin. He's got to catch the three. The wood could take the two, and hopefully a domino effect on the 610. Nope, not quite. Said 142 plus ball. Make it a first game score of 144. Not too shabby. No, not at all. Brian sitting at 117 through eight, so nothing to sneeze at. His ninth box. Now his ball breaks right to left. That time, his point of release carried the ball further out on the lane. So that, therefore, it broke full on the head pin instead of crossing over in the one two as he's done before. It's a matter of inches where that ball is comes in contact with the lane and when it starts to break. Right, Brian, Up to 126, so it's an eight pin lead for Craig through nine of the first game, but chance for Brian to uh, get closer here. Tenth and final box, game one. Mark to take the lead and or put it close. Now, how about a strike? And this guy throws strikes. He didn't throw any in the challenges match, but he's saving them. He's got four in this game alone. And here's a replay. Get out of there, six pin. Well, needs eight to tie it up. Anything over that, he will take over the lead from our champ. Another one. My. Wow. <laughs> He will take over the lead, but what opening games, John? Look at those numbers. 146 to 144, two pin lead for Brian. Promises to be a terrific game two when it starts next, right here on CNA. It's a good one so far with the challenger, Brian Fuller up two pins on Craig Holbrook, 146 to 144. They matched each, uh, matched each other left and right there in game one. Brian, five marks, four of them strikes. And Craig, uh, five marks also, two strikes and three spares. He's the three and the ten. Can he open with a mark in game two? Nice angle on that piece of wood next to the three pin as well. Got him both. Actually, the ball came out of the uh, channel and knocked down a 10 pin. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's tough. You want to hit the head pin? He did and got just the head pin and the five pin. So it's still worth only two. 
That's one you might want to circle and remember later. Yeah. yeah he worked out it with a nine box, though. Made it count, anyways. Now to Craig. He's going to take out eight to start here, leaving the one and three. Decent drop of eight with uh, missing the head pin. And he opens with his spark. Matching spares. He's hoping he's going to do a little bit than Brian did in his fill. Although he will be shooting for that same pin, <laughs> the head pin. He gets six to fall. Three, six, ten on the right with the seven pin. Couple pieces of wood in between the three and the seven. Possibility here of splitting it or being on the left of the three pin. Oh, he split on the terrific shot. Punishing the pins. Watch how fast this goes. Boy, didn't need the wood in there either. The three pin took out the seven. He's going to roll back drop. on. Hang on. His second mark. A lot of poise, the young baller there. And I know that would upset me back in the days when I hit the head pin and got just the one and the five on the spare. It would have bothered me for three or four frames. But Brian is right back, puts another mark up in the third. Fills it up with eight. Nine. And leaves the seven. Boy, last man standing in this match. <laughs> Two in a row. Three out of four boxes, Marks. Trying to protect a two-pin advantage. Actually, trails by three. Craig will increase that with this ball, but he's still facing a double spare in the third and fourth by Brian. On target, just three. Open in the third. Now, the choice here, does he go for the 6-10 or does he go for the head pin and try to get 9 or possibly 10? I say he goes for the head pin. Just an 8 box, but shows he's got a lot of confidence in his bowling. Opposite another spare in the fourth. Brian has regained the lead, and he'll increase that unless Greg can put up a mark here. Wants a 10 pin to go. Interesting lead, two, seven, eight, and ten. Piece of wood next to the two. So he will be open in the fourth. Chance for Brian to push it into double figures. The lead I'm talking about. And here is Rooters. They, they smell a victory here if he can take control of the match. Long ways to go, though. Seven pin lead with this ball. And again, lofted the ball further out in the lane. It didn't have a chance to break all the way over in the one two pocket. And he goes through the middle again. So just when you thought maybe someone is going to open up a double digit lead, spare three six happens. <laughs> Now on to his sixth box. Leaves the four horsemen left. Oh, he and converts picks him up. it. Fourth mark, spares in one, three, four, and six. 
Very seldom see that shot made nowadays with the plastic pins. It seems like the pin or the ball is deflected around the corner pins. Opening for Craig. Everything except the kingpin. And we may have an Earl sighting here. It's going to be close. We're going to have. I don't think he's going to remove it, but he's got to take a look at it anyways. <laughs> Pull out its spyglass to inspect. Yeah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Good job, Earl. Graceful. Well, the five pin. Can he throw a markup opposite a six frame by Brian? Yes! yes. Now Brian has a mark already posted in the sixth frame, so he can regain the lead with a decent fill, but he'll have to put another mark up to keep it. Oh my God! Oh. Ten. Wow, a more than decent fill. Take a look at this. The head pin is the last one to go down. Everything comes back. That's candle pin bowling for you, folks. You never know. And on that note, we step aside. The big finish to follow right here on Scenic. Here we go, folks. We're going to give you another chance in case you didn't miss it the first time around. Our next tape date is April 9th. We start about 9 in the morning. And please, come on down. See the works that go on here. See uh, possibly Craig or one of these other bowlers continue their streak of wins. It's kind of neat to see it live. We'll also tell you June 4th, mark that down, that is the day of the final taping. The top three bowlers are coming back for that one show. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, we're going to line chairs up down lanes on both sides of the pair that they bowl on. So you're going to have some choice seats if you show up here early. So June 4th, don't miss it. All set for the final four boxes, and what a match it has been here between Brian Fuller and Craig Holbrook. Craig right now up by some four pins, but he's working off a strike. Brian off of a spare right here in the seventh. Here's the fill. Ooh, disappointing one. Just two. So he's had two fills of two. And one of three. It's going to come back to haunt him. Good 10 box, though. In defense of Brian, though, he comes back and makes the marks count. But that last one is the only one he didn't hit the head pin. The other two fill and three fill, he actually hit the head pin and drove it right straight back. One of the few times he's missed the head pin with the first ball. Last box, and now this one. Oh boy. Seems a little unsure of his mechanics at this point. Bad time for that to happen. Two open boxes, seven and eight. You heard somebody say, now throw a real one. They, they kind of thought he kind of stole the last strike, our champ, which probably most of you at home thought that too. But uh, I mentioned the day you throw the triple that a lot of times you get a lucky one, and then you bury one, and you get another one like that. <laughs> <laughs> my, oh my. He gets another striking. He split the $1,000 with himself. <laughs> <laughs> Picture perfect strike, folks. Triangle of 6, 9, 10, the last three to go. And taking control of this match. Here we go for the triple. He didn't want to split it with himself. <laughs> Can't get the spare on strike. Picks up all 10, though. And all of a sudden, Craig Holbrook is up by 27 pins. Wow. That oh, onslaught came on quick. Brian open with a double strike. He needs another one now. It's a pretty good looking ball in the one two pocket, but leaves himself the five and a nine. Must convert.
The champ proving very worthy here down the stretch. In game two. It's been a game effort from Brian Fuller, but Craig has just been that much more consistent. Absolutely, and it's really it's the last three or four boxes of Brian uh, that he seemed to have lost it a little bit, but he'll be back. This is an excellent young bowler. I don't have a 224 to my resume, I know that. <laughs> Maybe two games. Nice spare. He'll end on a strong note with the spare and the bonus ball. Watch him play the wood effectively. Ball will take out the 610, and the wood takes out the 7. Great spare shot. There's been his nemesis, those fills. Two twos and a three. Uh, three twos, uh, two twos and two threes, right. Let's see what Craig can do to finish as he will make it five weeks in a row as the champion. He's already got enough. Got an outside, well, outside shot of topping his top score of 295, but it's going to be difficult now. The totals are 295 for Craig, 290 for Dave Barber, 289 for Richard. Oh, what a 10 box. Three. Terrific. And Craig's going to win his fifth in a row, and next week um, we'll, we'll give him an easy match. Either going to be Mike Morgan or Sean Baker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds easy. Yeah. Leaves the two goalposts to 7 and 10. If the wood comes out a little farther, he's got a shot in making this. Right about there would be nice. Okay, I did my part, Craig. <laughs> Told the wood to stop. There you go. Got him. One more ball coming up. Ricochet the ball off the piece of wood. Ball takes the 10. Piece of wood takes the 7. Picture perfect. Nicely done. 138 in a ball. One strike here would give him 292 total. There you go. Wow. I'm sorry, 282. Oh, boy. No, 292. No, 292. I was right. You're always oh, right the yeah. first time. Don't doubt your math. Here's the replay look, and what a way to finish. He wins it by 34 pins, 292 to 258. Still the champ, five weeks in a row. Back to wrap it up from Woburn right after this. Welcome back to Woburn for the wrap-up. It didn't look like it'd be a 34-pin victory for Craig Holbrook, but uh, down the stretch, he pulled away. No, this is what, it's like two prize fighters going at each other for 15 rounds, and finally one flinch in that 15th round. I think the last four boxes, Brian ran into a little mechanical problem or something, and Craig just kept on his game. But now, I'm going to tell you a stat about Craig, but keep in mind it came from my statistician, Earl. So I got to double check it, but he says that uh, that Craig has averaged 136 the last five weeks. Oh, that's a terrific number. Yeah. There's uh, no question why he's winning. We'll be back to uh, speak with the five-time champ in just a minute. But first, Trina standing by with the runner-ups. Trina. Thank you very much, Sean. Well, I've got a big crowd over with me right now. Brian Fuller, Brian, you did really well in the beginning. You were on a roll, and then you just seemed to lose your groove. What happened? I was just letting go of the ball too late a couple boxes there, and then he got hot, and that's about it. <laughs> well, Craig's definitely been hot. It, it felt like maybe your mechanics, you, like you said, you were letting go of the ball a little bit too late towards the end. Yeah. Just fatigue? No. I just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Got to figure it out. Hard to explain. Maybe when you go back and watch it back on the replay, you'll be able to dissect it a little bit better. Yep. Yeah. Well, I heard that your dad was quite a good candlepin bowler and, and used to bowl with our own Dan Murphy. Yeah, I remember talking to dad and he said he doesn't remember Dan beating him, but... Oh! <laughs> so your dad's got bragging rights over our own Dan. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk to Dan about that a little bit, see if his memory is the same as your father's. Well, yeah. hopefully we'll see you back again this season. All right, and we've got Pete. Yes. And my favorite Jacqueline. Hello, Jacqueline. And Peter Jr. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> so, not your best day. Uh, no, I hung in there, but Brian, I mean, he was on the head pin. He bowled great, and uh, so, so I moved on. So, 
Well, at least you know you've got a lot of support. A lot of Ayanuzos in the crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and Jacqueline, are you f proud of your daddy today? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like coming and watching your dad bowl? Yeah. What's your favorite part? Playing games. <laughs> Playing games. <laughs> are you proud of your dad when you see him on TV? Yeah. Yeah. He looks good on TV, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we think you're going to look pretty on TV, too. Will you come back and talk to me again? Yeah. All right. Hopefully, we'll get your dad back on here again. All right? All right. Thanks, guys. Back over to you, John. Trina, thanks. Uh, Earl's math is a fluid situation. That's We've got right. an update so on that average. Yeah, update. You don't have to wait for the film at 11. We <laughs> had an update. He didn't include today's match. Today's match, he's averaged 139 now for the last five weeks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the update. As long as I get the win. <laughs> what, do you, what do you make of this one? This was not a, it didn't appear to be a 34-pin victory. It, was, it certainly wasn't easy. Oh, it certainly wasn't. No, that was a battle. Um, he bowled really well. I think I caught a break on the backdoor strike and maybe it took a little wind out of him. I don't know. Sometimes mental game plays a lot into it. You know, who's feeling really good at the time. And maybe that had a little to do with it. Now you look, uh, of course, to make it six in a row, but next week will not be easy. Sean Baker or Mike Morgan, you'll get one of those two. <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> oh. oh, I could be in trouble. I better bowl well again. Are you aware Dead Klein has the, the record of eight in a row? Um, that's, that's a few away, but you start oh. to think of the whole enormity of this streak. Actually, I didn't know that. Um, something to think about. It's going to be hard to do, though. I mean, every one is hard. So right now I'm taking them one at a time. Well, it's just been tremendous so far. Five in a row. We'll look for number six in a row next week. We'll see you then. Great. Thank you. Another win for Craig Holbrook. We thank you for watching the $30,000 Candlepin Challenge for Dan Murphy and our CNA crew. I'm John Holt. See you next week.